Well, hello, hello. I've come out of hibernation and so has the garden. So the end of February is here. The days are much longer now and the crocuses and daffodils are opening up. Some of the perennial plants are starting to wake up too. And even the bird song is telling you spring is near. So it is about time that I update you on the gardening happenings here in southwest of Ireland. Will we do that? Will we tell them what we've been up to? Will we tell them? I suppose we will. Come on, so clean house first. So a clean work area is a must for productive beginnings. So the greenhouse got a really good wipe down and the wash inside and out in December before the lettuces and winter greens here had grown too large. I used a very mild soapy water and a standard window cleaning mop for it, rinsing it after with plenty of clean water and giving the plants a really good rinse to just to make sure that none of that soapy water had stayed on the leaves. So there is a huge difference in the amount of light the greenhouse panels are letting through now and the clean airs ensure the air quality is much better for all the young seedlings that are going to be housed here. And I would have kept the top windows open here as well on most of the sunnier, milder days to increase the airflow too. As you see, the lettuce bed is producing strongly still. Pak choy and salad rocker or arugula are um, going into seed now, um, so they are finished. And the mustard uh, frills is amazing. One of the nicest uh, plants now for overwinter. They would have been sown on the 2nd of October and then planted here, I think it was end of October. And obviously there's plenty there. And the turnips. And there's a radish there as well. We add a lovely crunch for these uh, spring salads. So last autumn's project of cutting the hornbeam hedges got really delayed in my standards, um, all due to catching COVID in October and then having the long COVID symptoms after. The plan for this season was to greatly reduce the height and the depth of most of the hedges, just to make it a bit more manageable for me. And as you see, the big ones here got their depth really reduced, but within the next two years, um, it will have filled in Hornby is brilliant for um, scheduled or accidental butchering. Now, I also removed all the dwarf laurel hedge surrounding the rose garden here. And the hedge initially ticked all my requirements for wind shelter and evergreen foliage in this area, but it then started to block out too much of the sunshine and light and create a really dense corner here where then the moss started to grow as you see it. And obviously this being a lovely pale colored quartz, um, the hedge had to go. So this resulted in a mountain of hedge trimmings, which I turned into a ton and a half of lovely wood chippings. Well, not ton and a half, it's like a cubic meter, one cubic meter and a half. These big builders ton bags, one and a half of those, uh, which I can then use to mulch the borders or paths with.
I am delighted to have made good progress with the compass bays build. I positioned them here at the very end of the orchard and it has taken a bit of time because I couldn't install the posts during the frosty spells of weather and had to wait for a bit warmer days and because of the sourcing of these heat treated um, pallets. So rather than the more commonly available chemically treated timber ones, these have been kiln dried to a high temperature to stop the spread of potential timber pests. Also, I wanted them all to be the same size so that the bay would look a bit more uniform. And it is the simplest of builds, reusing old fence posts as supports to hold the pallets up, using scrap pieces of wood to create a U-shaped pocket for the front panels to slide on and off. These are um, the only brand new timbers uh, that, uh, that I've used because we've never been um, using an untreated, that wide of a board that's untreated in any of our own uh, previous projects and getting all the hoarded leaves, grass clippings, uh, chicken bedding and shredded paper, bags and bags of it, emptied out to its intended destination, felt as a mini spring clean. As you see, it filled the first bay straight up. I used cardboard on the sides to stop, just to stop any spillages going through the pallet slats layered brown and green materials as much possible and uh, covered it with this metal sheet to keep the excess water out of it. I've also used some of the newly made wood chip in front of the compost base here just to make the place a bit cleaner and tidier looking and it also helps from the mud from sticking to the woods all the time. So it's a win-win. The next project at hand is creating a new mix bed, including some of the new bare root roses I had ordered from David Austin, and a revamping an old border, so stay tuned. Mm -hmm. 